Hello guys and welcome to this introduction video to Blender and Grease Pencil. This is for you if you never used Blender before. We will learn the basics of the basics, but even if you used Grease Pencil before, there are some things in this video that took me a long time to learn, so you may still learn something from it. So the first time you open Blender, you get this splash screen here. We can go ahead here under new file and open a new 2D animation file. But before I do that, I will go to edit, preferences, go to interface here and change the resolution to 1.3 so that you can see everything clearly in this tutorial you don't have to do this but you may want to let's close this preferences window and now let's go to file new 2d animation we have this blank canvas here and this is called the viewport and we have the outliner here here we can see our grease pencil object we can see a few collections and we can see our camera in the viewport we are actually in camera view but we can't see the camera borders that is because we are zoomed in a little bit so let's use our mouse wheel and turn it to zoom out a little bit now if we want to pan we do shift middle mouse button and we can pan like this and if we want to go out of camera view into the 3d space middle mouse button and drag like this and here we are in 3d space and we can see our camera object if you don't have a middle mouse button you can either use the gizmo here to navigate the 3d space you can use the zoom tool here to zoom in and out and you can use this hand tool here to pan there is also another method if you go to edit preferences and their input you can emulate three button mouse and this will let you use the alt key with the left mouse button to either go out of camera view like this or pan by doing alt shift left mouse button the disadvantage of using this method is that you can't use the alt key anymore for anything else but i figured out a workaround for this and put it in a video that you can check if you want to learn how you can use the middle mouse emulation effectively and this issue should be solved permanently by the coming of blender 4.0 next november now how to get back to camera view once you are here and having fun in this 3d space to do that you can just hit zero on the numpad of your keyboard zero again out of camera view and zero back again but now what if you don't have a name pad we have this button here the camera button that you can use just the same or you can go again to edit preferences input and activate emulate numpad now you can use the numbers on top of your keyboard to do the same so zero out and then zero back and then we have other shortcuts so one will get you to front view out of camera view three will get you to a side view and seven will get you to a top view now to go to the opposite direction you do control seven or you do three to go to the side and then control three to go to the other side the opposite one and then one to the front and control one to go to the opposite side use a numpad emulation of course basically the disadvantage is also that you will not be able to use different shortcuts that were used by those numbers on top so what you can do if you don't want to emulate the numpad is to use the gizmo 2 x here will get you to front view if you click on x again will get you to the opposite side and you can see the camera object here y will get you to front view and if you click on it it will get you to the opposite side too z will get you to the top view and z again will get you to the opposite side there is also another method if you have a regular qwerty keyboard if you use the tilde key you will get this pie menu in which you have all these options to go to top bottom left right back front camera view some keyboards of course don't have a tilde key but there is a video by ryan king art in which he explains several other methods to use the numpad including the possibility to change the short key for the spy menu now back to our grease pencil object which we can rename by double clicking on it and renaming it whatever and you see this pencil icon besides it that means that we are in draw mode so you can see the mods here under a drop down if you left click we have six mods for grease pencil escape to get out we will mostly focus on this mod in this video so in this mod you can of course draw using the draw tool you can fill shapes and you can use these lines and shapes to draw to now we have some brushes here and each brush have its settings here we can change its radius we can change its strength which means its opacity we can enable or disable pressure sensitivity if you use a drawing tablet and we have some advanced settings under here and here so you can play with these settings 
brushes or you can choose one of the default brushes here the one that is active by default is pencil and if you left click you get this menu in which you can choose more brushes if you change to the pen for example you see that the opacity changed to one and there is no pressure sensitivity we can click hold the left mouse button and drag to change the radius from here and we can also go to the viewport here hit f and now we can change the radius by moving the mouse so this line and then f again and this line we can also change the opacity by doing shift f so from one we move the mouse and then we left click we have this line again shift f and we have another line like this now we have also materials here if you left click you see that we have four default materials here and there is a difference between materials and brushes so brushes use materials with these settings to create strokes so each of these brushes are like presets and each of them uses different settings here and a special material too to change material settings you can go here under the material properties panel we can add new materials we can delete materials and if you click on one material you get its settings here so this one for example the solid stroke has a stroke enabled we have a line type it can be dots or squares or line and we have a style it can be a texture and we have the fill disabled here so each material can have a fill too then we have the second material and the only difference is that it uses a base color of red and we can change the color here and it uses a line type of squares instead of line so if you use this material to draw you see that the line we drew is composed of squares and these gaps here are because we don't have points in the space here the difference between the line type and the dots or squares type is that here blender won't connect points if you want to see points we can go to edit mode by hitting tab and then we change the selection mode here to points and then we do a to select all points and you see here that we have a point here for this square and then there's another point here we can move it with G like this and see that each point have a square. If we change to dots, the squares will turn to circles. And if we change to line, you see that Blender now connects all the points by adding lines between them. Let's change it back to square and let's go back to draw mode by doing tab again. Now we have the solid fill and here you see that stroke is disabled and fill is enabled with a gray color here and style solid. It can be a gradient and it can be also a texture. So we can actually draw using fill materials like this. I draw and I draw fill. It can also have a stroke. So if you change the color here to like blue, and then I enable stroke. You see that the shapes I drew now have strokes too. And you see that the strokes are a little bit transparent because we lowered the opacity in our brush settings. Let's disable the stroke here again. And the last one is a dot stroke, just like the square stroke, but with dots, of course. So the difference between these materials is just that, just a difference in the settings here. You can actually change them as you want here and you can double click and rename your material to anything you can of course create new materials and i suggest that you do just that play with the materials change their settings create new materials play with the brushes select a brush and draw using it like the airbrush for example and you see here that for the airbrush the material here is pinned and that is because the airbrush relies on the dot stroke material to look good but you can remove the pin here and change the material to something else like for example a solid stroke and unlike the materials, the changes you do to a brush won't affect the strokes on screen, but affects any stroke that you draw with the current settings. So now if we draw with the airbrush with this new material, you see that the stroke looks really ugly. And that's why the dot stroke material was pinned. And you can use this trick with other brushes too. So in the pen brush, for example, there is no pinned stroke. And if you don't want your material to change randomly to a fill, for example, you will select your solid stroke either here or here and then you pin it and every time you change to your pen brush now it will use the solid stroke this works also with the fill tool it has actually a default brush here with its own settings that you can change here and you see that it is using now a solid stroke if you are not careful you will try to fill a shape and you don't know what's the matter it's because it's using a stroke and not a fill so we click on this we change to fill and we pin it and now our fill tool will always use this fill material now there is an important setting is the color mode so with this icon selected the material color will be used and that means that if you change for example the fill color here the color of the fills that you already drew will change but you can also switch to color attributes which means that you will have a palette and you can choose from these colors to draw your strokes for example pink here and then we change to the draw tool and you see that the color changed again so again we change here to pink and 
and we draw a line we change again to something else we draw another line and since we drew these two lines with the solid stroke and we select the solid stroke here and we try to change its color the lines that we drew previously are changing colors but not the lines that we drew using color attributes there are also more settings under these panels the most important are under the object data properties in which you can add new layers delete layers change the settings for your layers everything we drew here we drew on the lines layer these are the two default layers in the default grease pencil object you can change the opacity of your layer you can change the blend mode and a lot of things here for that i have two other beginner tutorials for drawing and doing basic animations with grease pencil another important panel is the modifiers panel you have all these modifiers that you can use with your grease pencil object and i have also a dedicated video that you can watch and learn what all these modifiers can do for you we have also the effects panel and these are visual effects that affect the whole object and like the modifiers that can affect a single layer or a single stroke even Dante talks about these effects in his long grease pencil course and also talk about them in my short videos we have the tool panel in which we have the settings that we can find here for each of these tools and a little bit more settings we have the render panel in which you can select your rendering settings that is the last step after doing your drawing or animation one important setting is under color management make sure that you have settings resembling this because if it's different if it's like filmic the colors won't be accurate and when you use the eyedropper from here or from here by hovering on the color and doing e and you click on a color to sample it and then you draw using that color let's change the strings to one we don't have the same color and that is partly because of the settings here so we change this back to standard and now if we try again e eyedropper and then we draw again it is better but you see that there is still a problem so i guess the problem is also with our strokes being affected by lights so you see here this layer is affected by lights and this one too is affected by light you can either disable this but if you create more layers they will by default use lights too and sometimes you just forget to disable this for each layer so what you can do is to go to this panel here the object properties panel and go under visibility and disable use lights from here so this way you disable it globally for your grease pencil object and you don't worry about it anymore e sample the color and again you see now that the color is perfectly matching the output properties panel is where you can specify the path in which you want to save your drawing or animation and the formats now you may have a question if we are drawing in 3d space what is the plane we are using to draw these lines here so let's get out of camera view and we can see now our drawing in 3d space to visualize the plane in which we are drawing we need to go here under overlays hitting this arrow so the overlays are like helpers that you can see in the viewport and that they won't show in render some of them are disabled by default like the canvas for example if you enable canvas you can see now this grid that represents the plane on which we are drawing we are not seeing it clearly so we can either change our background and that by going here to the world panel and changing the color from here but if you want a white background in your final render but you don't want to see it here you can go here under this arrow and disable scene world these balls are called viewport shading modes and the settings here under this arrow are actually the settings of the one that is active and here it's the material preview mode so you change here to render mode this mode will show things as they are rendered it has its settings too and can also disable scene world here we have also the solid mode and here you can't see the colors that you painted using color attributes if you go here to material preview and we draw a bunch of strokes with different colors and we go to solid view you see that we only see the original color of our material and here in wireframe we see only the wireframe of our strokes so this is something to be aware of because you may by mistake switch mode and you don't know why your color attributes disappeared and also be aware that only in render mode the visual effects will work let's add a visual effect like a rim for example we can add some blur from here and we can change its position here so in render preview mode it is visible but in material preview you can't see it anymore now back to our drawing plane so how can we change the plane on which we draw on that you can do using the settings under these drop downs so here we are using the world origin for our plane placement and we are using front if we change front to side now we can draw on the side and we can change it to top to we can also change it to view so here the canvas will face us 
as we navigate and turn around the viewport. Now we can change here from origin to 3D cursor. By default, in the 2D animation file, the 3D cursor is also not displayed. So we go here again, we look for 3D cursor and we enable it. Let's also display our axis, so X, Y, and Z. And now we can see the X axis that goes from left to right, the Y axis that goes from front to back, and the Z axis that goes from top to bottom. Now we can change the place of our 3D cursor to change the place of our canvas too. To do that, we can do shift right click and you see that we changed place here. You can change back from view to front and here we can draw on the front in this new placement. And we can also do N and go here in the view 3D cursor and we can change the location from here. Also X that follows this red axis from right to left. We can change the Y from front to back and we can change the Z and we can also change the rotation of our 3D cursor. It will do nothing because we are using front here. So we need to change to cursor and now the canvas will follow the rotation of our 3D cursor. And if we draw now, we will draw on this new plane. We can also choose to draw on a surface that is the surface of a 3D object, like a cube or sphere or whatever. And you can also choose this option, stroke, and that will stick your stroke to other strokes. Decrease the width of my stroke a little bit. And now if I draw here and change the view, you see that the start point of my stroke is stuck to this other stroke. If I do this again and then I do this, I'm kind of drawing branches. Now what if I want my canvas origin to be on a specific point? For example, I want to draw something on the tip of this branch here. For that, we can go to edit mode by hitting tab and you switch to point select mode here. Then we try to select the tip of the stroke here and then we do shift S and here we can choose where to place our 3D cursor. So here we do cursor to select it. So you hover over this and then you release the shift S buttons and voila, your cursor is now here. Now back to draw mode by hitting the tab again. And we change here from stroke to 3D cursor. Now we can adjust the rotation of our 3D cursor by going here and playing with these values. Let's try to draw a flower here. So change color to maybe this like this. And we draw this ugly flower. Then some orange in the center. And you see that it works on some angles but not on other angles it's like the flower is always on top of other stroke and that is because if you go here to object data properties and go a little bit down to strokes the stroke depth order is set to 2d layers and we can change that to 3d location and now our flower will look properly in all angles so in some situations this mod is better but in others like here for example it will create some glitches they so switch back to 2d layers this stroke now and even this one they look better on the 2D layers mode. So this is also a setting that you will need to be aware of and choose the one that fits your situation best. The 3D location mode will always put in front the strokes that are closest to the camera, but the 2D layers mode will take into account the order of the layers and also the strokes that you drew recently will be on top of the older strokes. Now let's try to clean this mess. Let's put the 3D cursor back to its original position. Shift S cursor to world origin. We change this to front. And then the easiest way to delete all these strokes is by going to edit mode, tab, and then A to select everything. And then X, you get this menu. You can either delete strokes or points. And I like just to dissolve. So we do D. Let's do control Z. So X, D will delete everything and then back to draw mode so i guess this is it the basics of the basics your first baby steps in blender there is a lot more to learn the mods here the keyframes here but that is the subject of other videos you can watch my uh, grease pencil drawing video for beginners and then i have the comparison video with pencil 2d in which you can also learn to do some drawings and some basic animation you can watch the uh, one hour and a half video by dante that is packed with tips my short videos also short compilations videos two watts have a lot of videos for animation for sculpting daniel martinez lala pepe school have also more tutorials we have grease pencil rigging tutorials on this channel too i put a list in the description of channels and videos depending on what you want to learn right now you can start with any of them and begin your beautiful grease pencil journey leave a like subscribe and see you in another one very soon peace